Are you thinking about buying a home in 2023 and you wanna know how to write the best offer possible? Then this episode is for you. Hi, I'm Josh Alexander and your host of Orange County Housing Market News, your one-stop shop for all things Orange County real estate. So if you wanna be able to successfully buy or sell a home in Orange County this year, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Okay, so now let's go ahead and go over the top five ways to structure your offer in 2023 to give you the best chance of success when you're trying to purchase your home. Let's go ahead and get into it. So you don't need to be a housing expert to understand that going into 2023, we are in a completely different housing market than we were in just a year ago. So it makes sense that buyers are going to need to structure their offers differently in order to have success in today's market. So right now, there's one big difference between last year's sellers and this year's sellers in terms of what they're looking for, and it all comes down to certainty. Certainty that escrow is going to close. So let me explain. Last year, if a seller got into escrow and for some reason it was canceled, it wasn't really that big of a deal because odds are they had five other buyers behind them waiting to purchase the home and sometimes at higher prices. However, this year it's completely different. If a seller falls out of escrow, that seller is looking at weeks and weeks often of more open houses, more showings, more always keeping your house clean. It's a big pain and a big stress for sellers that they just don't want to go through. So knowing that information, what is the best way to structure offers in order to make sure you have the best shot? of getting your offer accepted this year, that's what we're gonna go over right now. So let's go over the top five things that you need to know about structuring offers. So the first one we're gonna start with is pre-approvals. Now you might be saying, I'm gonna change the channel. I don't wanna hear anything about basic information that I already know that I need a pre-approval in order to purchase a house. We're gonna talk about something different. Did you know there's two different types of pre-approvals? In fact, if you go through the California Residential Purchase Agreement, which is what you use to buy a house in California, you'll see that there's three different different type of approvals that you can get from a lender and one is definitely much better than the other. So a pre-qualification, a pre-approval, and then a fully underwritten pre-approval are the three different options you have to check. So for the sake of today's episode, let's just go ahead and say pre-qualifications are something that sellers do not want to see. The two options that you really need to have available to them are either going to be your pre-approval or the fully underwritten pre-approval. So let's go ahead and go over those two differences now. So with the pre-approval, you're giving all of your financial information to the the bank and they're going to be able to go through and give you an idea of what you can afford based on information. However, when you go through a fully underwritten pre-approval, it takes it one step above that. So the bank gathers all your information and they're basically going to take that and put that through their underwriting system, which is the system they use to fully qualify your loan to basically almost guarantee that your loan is going to go through. And if anything pops up out of the ordinary that you need to fix, they're going to be able to address it at that time before you even start looking for for home. So when we go back to that certainty factor that sellers are looking for, they're obviously going to want to see you check that fully underwritten pre-approval when you go to purchase a home. So one of the most important things that you need to do when you talk to a lender to figure out who you want to work with is you have to ask them, do you offer fully underwritten pre-approvals? If they say no, you're most likely going to want to find a different lender that's going to be able to provide this for you. Now, today's market, most lenders now provide this because over the last couple years, they've almost had to in order to be competitive. However, you definitely want to make sure you're checking to understand if it's a pre-approval or a fully underwritten pre-approval before you decide which lender you want to use. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to number two. So number two is you need to make sure that your agent is always contacting the listing agent prior to you placing an offer to figure out exactly what the seller wants. So yes, price is important to the seller. However, there's another 10 or 20 different terms in a contract that could be just as important or maybe even more important to the seller than just the price. So if your agent isn't calling to find the information out, when you submit your offer, you're already putting yourself at a disadvantage. So you need to make sure they call them. And on top of that, just by your agent calling, you're already having your agent build some rapport with the listing agent and communication is always key in a real estate transaction. I can't tell you the amount of times that I've had listing agents call me and letting me know that, hey, we had offers that were higher than your buyers. However, based on our conversation, 
conversations and the way you structured your offer, my seller decided to choose your buyer over them. So it's extremely important to make sure that your agent is always reaching out to the other agent before you decide to place an offer. So let me just give you a quick example of why this type of thing is so important. So let's go ahead and say that the seller that you're trying to purchase the home from is also purchasing a new home for themselves. So when they close escrow on their home, they're gonna have to transfer all of those funds over to a different escrow company and then close escrow on their house before they're even able to move in. And this typically is gonna take two to five days, which means if you don't have something in place for the seller to stay in the property after escrow closes until that house is available to them, then they're basically gonna be homeless for five days. They have to figure out what they wanna do with all of their stuff in between moves. It's chaos for the seller and obviously they don't want that. So just by calling ahead of time and figuring this information out, you can put in the terms of the contract that the seller can stay in the property for three or four days after escrow closes to allow them time to be able to get escrow closed on their own property and fully move. And this is obviously going to be a big advantage for the seller and something that's gonna help you out get your offer accepted. Now again, that's only one small example, but I can go over a hundred of these type of things that really can impact the ability for you to get your offer accepted. So just make sure that your agent calls the listing agent before you place an offer. Okay, so number three is going to be offer price. So what should you offer the seller in today's market where the buyer has a little bit more power than the seller due to the current market conditions? Well, if you're thinking that you're gonna be able to go out and throw a bunch of lowball offers at the seller and they're just going to accept it, most of the time you're going to be disappointed because right now, even though the market is trending downwards, sellers are not unrealistic. Unless they're in a situation where they absolutely have to sell and they don't have any other option and it has to go quickly, most sellers are not going to be even looking at offers that are much less than market value. So yes, the market is going down. However, the best way to place a competitive offer right now is one, make sure your agent's calling to figure out if there might be an opportunity for you to write a lower offer based on what the seller is looking for. But number two, if that opportunity is not there, you need to go and look at the last 90 days of comparable sales and you need to be able to place an offer that's going to be very similar or slightly lower than what the last comparable sale was because that's what the market is doing right now. We're not seeing the market drop by 5% a month. Right now, it's going at maybe a percent at most. So you're again, not gonna be able to throw out these low ball offers that are 20% below asking price and expect the seller to take you seriously. So if you wanna be able to have a competitive offer, you need to make sure that you're placing offers right now at or slightly to below market value based on the circumstances. Okay, so number four is going to be contingencies and how to structure those in 2023. So gone are the days of buyers having to remove all contingencies up front and placing an offer $100,000 over asking price and hoping that the seller will even look at it. Right now, we are in a completely different market that allows contingencies to come back in place. So what are contingencies? They're basically protections put in place in escrow that allows the buyer to get out of escrow if they find find something they don't like about the property, if the appraisal doesn't come back, if their loan can't be funded, they're all there to help the buyer get out of escrow and the majority of the time get their deposit back and then go find another property. Now, just because we are in a buyer's market, I do wanna remind you that the thing that sellers are still looking for right now more than anything is certainty. So once all contingencies are removed, then you're officially locked in to purchase the property. So the faster those contingencies can be removed, the more secure that is going to look for the seller. So even though it's a slight buyer's market right now, if you're able to reduce those contingencies down to something a little bit less while still keeping yourself protected, it's something you definitely want to consider. So let me give you a quick example. Right now, because demand is down, transactions are down, general inspectors are no longer tied up for a week, a week and a half before they can get out to the property to look at it. Right now, typically they can get out there two or three days after you open escrow. And on top of that, if the inspector says, hey, you've got a lot of plumbing issues here, you might want to hire a plumber specifically to come through to give you a better idea of exactly what's happening and maybe how much it would be to fix, you still have time to do that because they're usually only booked out a few days as well. Now, the reason I bring this up is because the way the contract is written, the standard form says that you have 17 days to do all of your inspections, which in this market, oftentimes you don't need that amount. So if you talk to your agent and situation by situation, it makes sense to maybe reduce that to 14 days or 12 days 
that's gonna make your offer look a little bit stronger to the seller because it's going to lock you in to purchase a property faster, which again, in today's market, sellers are looking for certainty. So that's something that you need to go over on a case-by-case -case basis with your agent and basically figure out exactly what the best strategy is for every home that you place an offer on. Okay, so we're down to the last one, number five. And this one is something that a lot of people don't know about, but it's something that can put you over the edge and help you get your offer accepted if the seller is going back between you and another offer. And that is having your lender talk to the listing agent directly when you place your offer. So when I place a buyer's offer, I always tell the lender, call the listing agent, go over the financial information with them and answer any questions they might have. Because right now, because interest rates have been bouncing all over the place, one of the biggest reasons escrows have been falling out is because of the loan. So if the lender can reassure the listing agent that your finances are solid, there's no issue, it's fully underwritten, that's going to give the listing agent more confidence to recommend your offer over somebody else that didn't have the lender call because they now have more information about the loan and more confidence about the loan going into it when they talk to the seller about your offer. So just make sure your agent knows that they need to contact the lender every time you place an offer and make sure that lender reaches out to the listing agent and lets them know how financially secure you are because with that as well as your agent talking you up that's going to give you a much better chance of getting your offer accepted. So certainty is definitely the name of the game this year in the 2023 housing market it to be able to make a strong offer and have the best chance of getting your offer accepted. Now, even though we did go over the top five, there are plenty of other ways out there to make your offer even stronger. If you know of some that you've used to be able to purchase your home, feel free to leave those in the comments below to help other people out. And if you are thinking of purchasing a home, this is why it's so important to make sure that you pair up with a knowledgeable real estate agent that can not only make sure you have a strong offer, but that also keeps you protected during the entire escrow process. So if you're thinking about buying a home and you ever want to discuss strategies specific to you and the neighborhood that you're looking at, feel free to set up a discovery call with me anytime. The information will be below in the comments or in the show notes, whichever way you're watching this on. And we can go over the market conditions in your neighborhood and some strategies that you can use to make sure that you're submitting the best offer possible. So until next week, stay healthy, stay happy, and I'll see you on next show. Bye everybody.